Hello, my name is Shauna. Welcome to Bell's Corners Public School Family Christmas Special. Hi, my name is Tosho. It's presented by the Bell's Corners Junior English Choir. Have you ever heard of the Otto Storytellers? Yes, I think they've been to our school before. Great, because Jane Smith of the Otto Storytellers is here to tell a Christmas story. Okay, let's listen. Well, every single person in the village was talking about it. Everybody was talking about it, and that's why I feel I should tell you so that you can talk about it too. They were all talking about it, from the youngest shepherd all the way up to old Egbert. You know old Egbert. He was the chief chef in the king's castle high on the hill. Imagine it was only two days before Christmas and a horrible windstorm had broken the stained glass window in the church. The winter had already been so difficult and the people were sure that this was a sign of bad luck to come. How could they celebrate Christmas without their stained glass window? They were so proud of it. It was the only window like its kind in, in the whole area. The glass was, was very rare, and the craftsmen who had made it, well, they were even harder to find. How could anybody be happy for Christmas without their stained glass window? The king, he was in the castle, and he looked down on the village. And instead of seeing people who were all bustling around buying gifts and cooking cookies, he just saw all his villagers looking downright gloomy. What was to be done? That was a question that everybody was asking themselves. The shepherds were so busy asking that question that they forgot look, to look after their sheep, and their sheep were just running all over the place. The milkmaids were so upset about it that they spilt the milk all over the place. The seamstresses were pricking their fingers, and old Egbert, well, he burnt all the pastry, and he dropped the plum pudding for Christmas dinner right on the floor. The bad luck had already started. What were they going to do? Well, the king and the good father, the pastor of the little church, decided to have a meeting to see if they could come up with a solution. I know, said the king. I'll send out a proclamation. It will tell all the villagers not to worry about the stained glass window. They'll have to listen to me because I'm the king. And I will pray to the saints, said the good father. I will pray that we will find an answer to our problems. But despite all the proclamations and all the good father's prayers, the people still continued to walk around looking gloomy. Then, it was as if the father's prayers had been answered. All of a sudden, he had an idea, and he rushed over to the king to tell him. He had to wait a minute while the king finished signing a proclamation. But then he was able to fill his highness in with the solution to the problem. I know, your highness. I know of a young monk. Now, this young monk, he lives in a monastery very close by. And when this young monk was a boy, he was an apprentice to his father. His father was a stained glass artisan. His father, his grandfather, and who knows how many great grandfathers before him, they all made stained glass windows. And this young man worked for his father. I'm sure he remembers how to do it. Why don't we call him and have him come and repair our window so that it's ready for Christmas mass? Well, the king thought this was a marvelous idea. So he sent a messenger off right away to the nearest monastery to get that monk. Well, the messenger rode as fast as he could, but it was a long way, and it wasn't until very late at night that he finally arrived at the monastery. The young monk set off as quickly as he could for the village. He arrived there the next day, that afternoon, just one day before Christmas. The young monk walked through the streets with his father's tools in a sack over his back, and he wished Merry Christmas to everyone he saw. The villagers greeted him warmly, and they led him to the church, and they showed him the stained glass window. Well, the young monk, he tried to smile bravely when he looked at the problem that was facing him. The window really was damaged. This is going to be a difficult job, he said. 
But when he saw the looks on all of the people's faces, he quickly said, but don't worry, I'm sure I'll be able to have it done for Christmas Day. Well, the villagers were so reassured that they all went off and started to prepare for the Christmas feast that night. When the young monk was left all by himself in the church, his expression changed. If only they knew. True, he had been an apprentice to his father, but as a boy, he'd never been able to do the job of working on stained glass very well. Every time he touched the glass, it seemed to break. He was always dropping his tools on other people. And if he ever had to go up on a ladder, it always seemed to wibble or wobble, and he was always afraid of losing his balance. He had been so excited when the messenger had come and asked for him. Now was his chance to do something really, really good. And he'd said yes without even thinking. And here he was, having to do a job that he wasn't sure he'd be able to do. But there was no time. There was no time to sit around feeling sorry for himself. He had to get down to work. He remembered all the steps he needed to do. He needed to draw a pattern of all the pieces that he needed to replace on the stained glass window. He needed to choose the glass so that the colors would match the colors that were already there. He needed to put the lead stripping around it, and he needed to putty it all into place. Sounded pretty easy. But when he started to work, well, his pattern didn't look quite right. And the colors of his glass, well, they weren't right on either. The lead stripping, it kept twisting, and the putty was either too hard or too soft. But still, he was determined he'd said he'd do the job, so he worked and he worked hard. The sun started to set in the village, and all the villagers made their way up to the castle on the hill for their Christmas Eve celebration with the king. They were going to have a good time. The young monk, he stayed by himself. By now it was getting dark in the church where he was working, and he only had the light of candles to see by. Still, he managed to make a window all but one piece was up. All but one piece. All he had to do was climb that ladder and put that one piece into place. But it was so dark with just the candles. He climbed up the ladder very carefully, rung by rung. It seemed higher than he remembered. Right at the top, he took that one piece of glass and he carefully started to fit it into place. The ladder began to wibble and wobble. The young monk started to lose his balance, and he dropped the piece of glass. It went shattering to the floor, and then he lost his balance completely and tumbled head first right through the stained glass window. He landed outside in the snow. Pieces of colored glass were all around him. He was very lucky that he wasn't hurt. He was just shaken up. But what did hurt was the thought of how the villagers would feel when the next morning they would come to Mass and there'd be nothing but a big hole in their church wall. He picked himself up and he resolved to fix the problem. Even if it took him all night, he was going to put something up to cover the hole. A storm was beginning to blow. He needed to protect the church. So in the darkness and with his fingers frozen stiff, he worked and worked and worked until he could work no more. He had made a very crude frame just to cover over where the window had been. The storm, the snow had changed into icy sleet. And the young monk was so tired he couldn't work anymore. He went down the ladder to the back of the church and he prayed. He prayed that the villagers would understand, and he prayed for forgiveness. And then he was so exhausted, he fell asleep. The storm kept on blowing. Look it! It's beautiful! I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Do you see the angel? And there, there's the Mother Mary and the Christ child. When the young monk opened his eyes, he could see all the villagers standing around, and a most miraculous sight met his eyes. In the place where he had made his rough frame, 
there was the most beautiful window he had ever seen. All through the night when the storm had been blowing, the ice had formed over that frame. And in the most intricate patterns, it was almost as if an angel, an artist angel, had come and made this beautiful stained glass window out of ice. The villagers celebrated their Christmas mass and were thankful for this miracle. They were thankful for the young monk who had come to help them. But after the mass was over, the young monk went to the good father. Father, I had nothing to do with that window. In fact, I destroyed your other one completely. It seems you've got the wrong person to do your job, and I'm so sorry that I said I could do something that I really couldn't do. The priest looked at the young monk. It's all right, my boy. I know that you broke the window. I came by last night, and I saw all the pieces of glass in the snow. I saw you in the back praying there. You'd fallen asleep. I put a blanket over you to keep you warm. You tried your best. And a miracle did happen. And for that, we can be thankful. Look at this. Look at this wonder. When the ice melts, we'll call in some real stained glass workers to fix our stained glass window. But for the time being, look what we have. We will always remember you, you and your miraculous Christmas window. And that's the story of the Christmas window. This is the Bells Corners Public School French Choir. It is directed by Madame Beauchemin. Whitney, Tia, and Cheryl. They're going to show us how to make Christmas napkin rings. What will you need to make these, Whitney? Well, you'll need scissors, yarn, a toilet paper roll, a needle, and glue. Show us how. You will just cut from the toilet paper tube that I have just done. 
like this. Then you will start to wrap some thread around it, in and around and around. And then, and then you take a different color and you start weaving it in and out. Then, and then you tie it in a bow. And you've got a Christmas napkin ring. This will make a great Christmas gift for friends or for family. Thank you. Mrs. Larson, Tova, and Kristen. They are here to make deli delicious gingerbread men for us to eat. Let's watch and see how it's done. Well, first I'll read the recipe off that we're going to uh, use for the gingerbread men. It's half a cup of shortening, half a cup of sugar, 
half a cup of dark molasses, quarter of a cup of water, two and a half cups of flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of soda, three quarters of a teaspoon of ginger, a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, and an eighth of a teaspoon of allspice. As the girls are putting it together, we'll um, list off the ingredients again if you'd like to write it down. So Tova, do you want to get started with the sh sugar and the shortening? Mix that up. And Kristen, if you want to go ahead and start measuring the sugar and things out. Yes, that's right. So you cream the sugar and the shortening together. First step in the process. Lard is kind of hard here. You want me to have a crack at that? Water Tova and the molasses, eh? Okay. Water. <coughs> Half a cup of molasses. Just use this cup and half okay. fill it, okay, Kristen? Okay, you can stir that up and we'll add Kristen's things in. How are you doing, Kristen? You got the flour in? Yeah. Okay. Mm. yeah. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Take the lid off on a little bit. That's looking good, so well. Eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, three quarters of ginger, and, and one eighth of allspice. Now we're that's my Okay, we've got everything in there. We're ready to mix it together, I guess, eh? Okay, let Kristen do some mixing now, I told her. There we go, Kristen.
Okay, so let me move that over to the side so we have a spot to roll it, please. Just over there inside that point you were making. Beautiful tablecloth. Ready for the cookie cutter. I'm going to put the cookies on the cookie sheet now. Uh, the cookie cutter's on the table. You can put the raisins on for eyes if you like. Would you like to cut a couple, Kristen? Okay, place them on the pan and they're ready to pop in the oven. for the oven, eh?
Presto, gingerbread man. Well, what do you think? Is it good enough to eat? Yeah. Would you like Bento Shield? Sure. Thank you. Delicious. On behalf, On behalf of the Bells Corners Public School Junior Choir, we would like to present this $200 check to the Snowsuit Fund. On uh, behalf of the Snowsuit Fund, I would like to thank the Junior Choir from Bell's Corners Public School. The motto for the Snowsuit Fund is share your warmth with a child. And with the money that you've donated to us from the concert you had, we can buy a number of snowsuits that will keep some girls and boys in Ottawa and Carleton a lot warmer this winter. And so on behalf of them, the children who are going to get these snowsuits, thank you very, very much. Very, very kind of you to have a concert on our behalf. Thank you.